Hi everyone, in this video we will be dealing with the previous year questions that were asked from formalism of literary theory. So we will be dealing with the questions that were asked from formalism from December 2018 to December 2021 and June 2022 uh, cycles merged examination. So we will be dealing with the NTA questions that were asked from formalism. So let's look at the uh, questions that were asked from formalism. So in all these exams, there were three questions that were directly asked from formalism. And we are not here dealing with the questions that are asked from different genres or that are asked uh, from uh, different theories. So we will be dealing with the examinations or the questions that were asked from formalism alone. And uh, from, from the NTA perspective or from after, that is from December 2018, there were three questions that were asked from formalism. And let's look at the options. Let's look at the questions. So the first question was, which two terms among the following are associated with formalist criticism? which two terms among the following are associated with formalist criticism and the options are aura, actant, narrity, defamiliarization and foregrounding. Aura, actant, narrity, defamiliarization and foregrounding. So from these five options you have to choose the correct combination. So before moving to the uh, answer Let's say that formalism, we know, it gave importance to the form of a particular literary text. It gives importance to the form, the narrative patterns, the uh, the rhyme, the rhythm, the meter, form, etc. So here, uh, when we study literary criticism or literary theory, uh, this is all. This is something that I always say. You have to take care, or you have to study the important writers who belong to the who belongs to this particular theory. Then the important concepts that comes under that literary theory. So here, the question is from the concept. So we know that defamiliarization is an important concept that comes under. Um, Formalism. So, defamiliarization, it was first coined in 1917 by Victor Slovisky in his essay, Art as a Device. Okay, it was first coined in 1917 by Victor Slovisky in his essay, Art as a Device. So, here defamiliarization is something that imparts a uniqueness to a literary work. This is something that differentiates a, a, con a common conversation or differentiates a ordinary language from that of a literary language. So, the literary device, we can say that defamiliarization is purposefully given to a literary text by the authors as a literary device in order to make uh, the ordinary and familiar subjects look strange okay so for example if we say i love him or i love her it sounds similar or it sounds familiar but when i say my love is like a red red rose that sounds that brings an estrangement to this particular statement so that is what is called as defamiliarization so we can say that the primary aim of literature is to estrange or defamiliarize. The primary aim of literature is to estrange or defamiliarize by disrupting the modes of ordinary linguistic discourse as literature makes strange the world of everyday perception and renews the reader's lost capacity for fresh sensation. So that is the primary aim of literary literature according to formalism in order to defamiliarize or estrange and how do they achieve that? They disrupt the ordinary linguistic discourse and they give uniqueness to this particular literary work by making the everyday perception strange and renew the reader's lost feel of or lost capacity for fresh sensation. So that is called defamiliarization. Similarly, foregrounding is also an important concept that comes under formalism. Okay, so foregrounding is a concept in literary studies concerning making a linguistic utterance stand out from the surrounding linguistic context from given literary traditions or from more general world knowledge. Okay, so foregrounding, it is a concept in literary studies where a literary utterance is made to stand out from the surrounding context 
it is the throwing into relief of the linguistic sign against the backdrop of the norms of the ordinary language. So, it is almost similar to that of defamiliarization. So, it is generally used to highlight important parts of a text to aid memorability or to invite interpretation. So, and we know that there are two types of foregrounding. One is parallelism. One is parallelism and the other one is deviation. So, parallelism, it can be explained as an uh, unexpected regularity. It is more like an unexpected regularity while um, deviation is more like an unexpected irregularity. Okay, parallelism it is an unexpected regularity while deviation is an unexpected irregularity. For example, this word close phrase etc. So, that is foregrounding. So, let us go back to the question. Which two terms among the following are associated with formalist criticism? So, the correct answer is option D and E. Option D and E. D and E comes as option D. So, the correct answer is option D. So, that is the first question that was asked from formalism. Now let's move on to the next question. Which of the following statements by Roman Jakobson is true about metaphor and metonymy? Which of the following statements by Roman Jakobson is true about metaphor and metonymy? So while speaking about metaphor and metonymy and Roman Jakobson, we know that Roman Jakobson he is one of the important figures when comes that comes to um, 
uh, comes to formalism because formalism includes three major groups the pre linguistic circle, Moscow linguistic circle, and the Opoyas. So, Raman Yakovson, he is one of the most important members who comes under formalism. So, uh, his major concepts are metaphor and metonymy. Okay, so here you have to identify which of the following statements are true about metaphor and metonymy. So, metaphor is alien to the continuity disorder, whereas metonymy is alien to the similarity disorder. Metaphor is alien to the similarity disorder and metonymy to the continuity disorder. Metaphor is alien to both the similarity disorder and the continuity disorder and metonymy is common to both. Metaphor is common to both similarity disorder and continuity disorder but metonymy is alien to both. So, these are the four options given where you have to identify the true statement regarding metaphor and metonymy. So, before looking to the answer, let's look at what this metaphor and metonymy is. So, metaphor and metonymy are two concepts uh, popularized by Raman Jakobsen and according to him, language has a bipolar structure. Bipolar structure in the sense one or the other. So, in this bipolar structure, language oscillates between two poles. One is metaphor and the other one is metonymy. So, here language oscillates between metaphor and metonymy and any development that takes place in this any discourse it happens between this metaphor and metonymy. So, language according to Raman Jakobson has a bipolar structure where it oscillates between metaphor and metonymy and the development of any discourse takes place along these two semantic lines. So, metaphor and metonymy. Metaphor is the use of a word or a phrase to establish a comparison between two words. When I say my love is a red red rose or when I say uh, she is the ice or uh, similar so without as or like when we compare two dissimilar objects or when we compare when we establish a comparison between two ideas that is what is called as metaphor. At the same time, metonymy, we use a phrase or a word for another to which they, which it bears a relation as the effect of the course or the abstract for the concrete. So, when I say this whole belongs to the crown, here the crown is used to refer either to the king or to the government. Okay, so here one is the cause effect relationship or the abstract concrete relationship that these two has with each other. So, that is what is called as metonymy. So, according to Raman Jakobsen, poetry is essentially metaphoric. Yeah, poetry is essentially metaphoric because it focuses on science and the principles of similarity. Okay, and this was widely used in Romanticism, during Romanticism and Symbolism. At the same time, prose is more metonymic. Okay, it focuses on the references. Prose works on references while poetry works on signs and prose is based on continuity. Okay, so it is predominant in realism. So, with this, let's look at the options once again. Metaphor is alien to the continuity disorder, whereas metonymy is alien to the similarity disorder. That's a wrong statement. Metaphor is alien to the similarity disorder and metonymy to the continuity disorder. That's a correct statement. Metaphor is alien to both the similarity disorder and the continuity disorder and metonymy is common to both. That's also wrong. Metaphor is common to both similarity disorder and continuity disorder but metonymy is alien to both. That's also a wrong statement. So, the correct answer is option B. Okay, so the correct answer is option B. So, again, there was another question that was asked in December 2021 and June 2022 from uh, metaphor and metonymy. So, just like what we have uh, already explained, we know what a metaphor is and what a metonymy. So, let's look at the question. Which of the following theorist identifies metonymy and metaphor as two fundamental structures of language? Which of the following theorist identifies metonymy and metaphor as two fundamental structures of language? Ferdinand de Zashur, Roland Barthes, J.L. Austin and Roman Jakobson. So, just as we mentioned here, uh, metaphor and metonymy, it was developed by Roman Jakobson in order to explain the bipolar structure of a language. So, the correct answer is option D, that is Roman Jakobson. So, these were the 
three questions that were asked from uh, formalism. So, as I said earlier, literary theory, it's actually very easy to answer if you have studied it very precisely. So, look at the theories and then you have to look at the, uh, look at the major uh, ideologies or ma the crust of the um, I mean, crust of these theories, then you have to look out for the major theorist and the major works and major concepts popularized and written by them. So, then it would be a very, then most of the questions from literary theory would uh, sound very direct. So, these are the three questions that were asked from formalism. So, that's all for this video. Thank you.